Hello everyone on the fifth panel of our conference. Uh, sorry for a little delay. Uh, now we are on board. Um, our fifth panel is uh, entitled for the citizenship of the future and we will listen to the speeches that say about uh, educational and eye-opening power of animation uh, so please meet our first uh, speaker uh, Iliana Gordiv um, she is a lecturer of fine art school uh, of Lisbon University author of a book entitled the aesthetic uh, interferences which is about stop motion animation she is also a producer and a dire director of numerous animation uh, and uh, she will uh, tell us about childhood animation learning so i wish you uh, a pleasant speech and of course, I, I invite you, you, the listeners, um, to leave your uh, questions in the comment section on YouTube or Facebook, uh, if you will have any. So please enjoy and welcome, Iliana. Thank you. Thank you, Agnieszka. Thank you. Thank you for being here for this invitation. For me, it's always very good to see you and to be take part of this event because i think to think animation and think animation and animation bring us the reality and not just the imagination is always always very interesting for our good souls i think so <laughs> yes okay. thank you a lot and, yeah, so of course i agree yeah thank you very much and uh i will be Okay, share my screen. If you're showing the presentation, we cannot see it yet. But yeah, yeah, but now I think it is. Yes, it you is. Can see, okay. Yes. Uh, the theme of my presentation is the work of Elsa Cerqueira. Elsa Cerqueira is a professor in Portugal of philosophy, and she works with children, with so many uh, uh, workshops with the schools of Portugal. And uh, uh, she exactly she joined animation, learning animation, and also philosophy. So it's very interesting to make children more conscious about their the, themselves uh, as human being, as a thinker. And this is, I think, is very interesting. Uh, this, the, the objective, exactly this reflection about the creation of animation, the teaching process, uh, and how it is good for the development uh, the children as human being, as a citizen, okay? It's because I think if you are a good human being, you will be a good citizen. This is very necessary in, and crucial to everybody uh, has a good society. So that the methodology of the Elsa Cerqueira is uh, two, two motives. As I said, as she said, philosophy with cinema for children, and the project is focused in the schools of in anime uh, in Amarante. Amarante is a city here in Portugal, and the 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 motto, the, the crucial thing is educate the look to expand thinking, feeling, imagine, and then act. So is to explain that is to is offer to the children a way to develop her mind as a thinker and then the, the feeling the sensation what they feel about what they see and imagine to develop the creativity of the student and then go to the action to the last part of this of this project it is create animation, think animation, think other works with drawings and, and sculpture and any other else the children can do in the school to their development. So it's very interesting because at the same time there is an offer of the tools 
the children do that, let the children do by themselves uh, without, uh, without sense, censor, censorship, okay? So it's very interesting. Uh, she's a philosopher te teacher, it's a pioneer, this project in Portugal, and it, she was awarded with the Global Teacher Prize last year, exactly with this project that joined philo philosophy, cinema, and uh, children, and, and especially the animation. Uh, her practice is based on the philosophical research community named by Matthew Leitner. It calls for pedagogy of the question within the film, a moment in which, which each child collaboratively discovers the elements of the film narrative, characters, sounds, colors, planes, space, time, and creating more profound questions. And in this point that uh, she can develop the, the philosopher thinker to this children. Uh, this study of case is, is a presentation, this presentation is based on a presentation of Elsa uh, that she done in Monster in, in this year in March in the Society of Lisbon, Society of Portugal of Fine Arts here in, in in this year. Uh, she presents how she works and explains the sensation and feelings and conscience of the children uh, about one animation. This, this presentation of Elsa is based on this animation, but the process, the process is done with many animations uh, along of the year. Okay, so uh, uh, I asked Tonyeska to show us just a little teaser of this animation shoemaker uh, by Vasco Sá and David Odell, uh, two Portuguese animation, animators. Please, Anishka, can you show us? So let's follow. So in this case, you can see that this animation, the aesthetic, and even the story, is not made for children. It's just a story that has his his proper, uh, how do I say, narrative line. Okay, uh, not exactly for children. It's in in animation. as a uh, normally choose to, to work with children but uh, you can see that even if it's not for children uh, she can develop because of the theme of this animation so the theme of the animation is the the, the point to begin this process with the children okay so the public are children in this case was seven, eight years old, okay, from the basic school of Amarante. The ambience, uh, the, this process, the workshop is on the library when the, the chairs are put in circles, okay, and the duration is more or less one hour, okay, and the objective arises, the, 
this object, the, the shoe, in this case, the object that she worked with the children are the shoe. So this object arises sensation, sense of construction, curiosity to children, and share think in this group. So it's a process done in group. It's not individual. It's not uh, child by child, but the children, the group. Okay. So they watch the animation, of course, the first, and then they have a brainstorm and questions came from from this brainstorm. What is shoe? Uh, we, we use shoe for what? And whatever. Then we have another uh, part, another step of this process is the artistical. And then the children will draw about shoes and uh, created something about the shoes. They leave, they take shoes from the, their, their their home and go to school with the shoes and talk about the history of the shoes when they when they uh, uh, buy the shoes, why they buy the shoes, the shoe is from, is from there, or it's from their mom, father, brother, whatever. And another point is to know one actual shoe baker to, to, to this process and create another place for, for shoes and then all the, these shoes that they put in the school they create a, a mountain or, or another kind of, uh, how can I say, I forgot the word, another kind of use to these shoes, bring with these shoes with coloring and, and, and painting, okay, using these shoes as a, a, a brush, and painting is, is this part, the color with the shoes, create a new world from shoes, as you have a shoe shop, they create another word uh, uh, based on the word, single word, shoes. And after that, they go to the creation of animation in stop motion with the old shoes and story about shoes. In this case, as she works with Abifé Jean at Casa Museu, Museu de Vilar. It's another city near of Amarante. So the questions that arise that arise in this in this case, what are the shoes? What we throw away the old shoes? And after that, what is to be old? Uh, are the shoes equal because we have so many kinds of shoes? Huh? Are the shoes people? Shoes have a story, and this and uh, uh, since this point, they with Elsa can develop other thinking about the shoes, but not just about the shoes, but about all the contest, the, the social contest. Okay, so they can understand and develop the sense of utility, consumerism, freedom and determinism, because any, uh, each kind of shoes you can use one situation and another not, does it? So, there is a difference. Uh, the freedom, because we can walk with shoes, we can walk without shoes, we can walk for, for right or for left, or whatever. The gravity difference, of course, because of the people and objects. Objects have story, people has a story, okay? And all, all of this has a link to reality and fiction, okay? Because when you think if your shoes have a story, it would be a, 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 a fiction. But when you think the story that these shoes has, oh, the shoes is from my father. So he used the shoes to go to work every day. So it's a reality, it's not a fiction. So it's very interesting, uh, uh, this process, when you put in a group of children that you have a mind open to, to developing anything. So philosophy with cinema for children, open this path for children to become person who thinks, to be more conscious about themselves. 
to be more creative with a look wider, encourage the social socialization, of course, because all work is made in group, and promote the acceptance of the difference too. Of course, because you know that you think one thing, one thing, but your colleague thinks a different thing, the shoes are different, and so on. Uh, the motto, educate to look and expand thinking, feeling, imagining, and acting, uh, somehow it's very similar of the work of Paulo Freire's concept. Paulo Freire is a very important Brazilian educator and thinker. And that, uh, what are uh, the basic concepts in the work of Paulo Freire is the previous, is to respect the previous knowledge of the student, the, indep the, indep the independence of this student, and teaching is not just a transfer of knowledge, but is a development, is a construction of this knowledge. And learning in a qualitative sense, not in an individual sense. So that are exactly the same uh, concepts developed by the philosophy of uh, cinema for children from Elsa. Uh, some uh, uh, statements of Paulo Freire that it fit perfectly to the work of Elsa. Education is an act of love, therefore, an act of courage. You cannot fear the debate, the analysis of reality. You cannot escape the creative discussion under penalty of being fake. It's essential to reduce the distance between what is said and what is done in such a way that that a given moment your speech is not is your practice so it's very interesting because this is exactly what as a said that makes because in the final of all the process done what the children will do you do an animation okay so the the, the close of this project is a, a artistic creation and when the children, of course, can think and can analyze it and reflect about what was done before. So it's very, it's a very good. The conclusion is, if being a citizen is to take part of the same city, is this is what Aristotle is, and I go to Greece because uh, the concept of citizen, the city, and it's very flexible, it's very, it's very diverse, depends on the time when it was developed. So in this case, I go to Greece because it's the beginning of this thing. So the citizen is to take part of the same city. Uh, the use of animation as teaching tool in Elsa Sequeira's method is really a way to build the full citizen capable of thinking, analyzing, evaluating, choosing and create their path positive and collectively collective okay so here there is some reference and thank you very much for being here and the interest about this subject i think it's very good thank you very much thank you a lot uh, for this presentation uh, i have already questions but I will leave them for a discussion that will be after uh, the second uh, speech. Uh, so thank you very much for all those ideas. Thank you, Anis. Thanks I was, uh, a lot. Uh, yes, it, it will be um, later. And now please uh, welcome uh, Esteban Anvar Sosa Casas uh, from uh, UNIR Mexico. Um, he is a video editor, teacher, trainer, film critic, and a uh, historian of the animation. Uh, he has been teaching about video uh, editing and animation in diverse uh, universities and school, uh, schools in Mexico City. Uh, also, uh, he has been a post-production assistant at uh, Dynamite Post uh, in the diverse Mexican TV series. Uh, so uh, he will uh, tell us about Mexican animation in the face of the social issues. 
um, have a pleasant uh, speech um, and good luck. Thank you so much, Agnieszka. Uh, I would like to show to you um, uh, some feature films that talk now about social issues. But first, I would like to here's my well, here's my name. And if you have some questions, I will repeat it later. My email address. So when we usually when we go to the movie theaters and see uh, animated heroes, usually not always. Uh, heroes in animation are depicted flawless in many ways. Uh, they look are very neat. They have nice appearance. They have a good sense of humor. They are smart, courageous. But once in a while, we we can see another kind of heroes, the unusual heroes, like I said. So these unusual heroes uh, show to us uh, some of them has disabilities, but they can prove that there are there are no limits. Their unique features make them one of a kind. They have a strong values as compassion, guidance, and courage, and they achieve to engage with the audience by creating an empathy to them. So here are some examples. Um, in in some uh, academics papers, Elsa is considered as a outcast or uh, or like. A, Girl with a disability. We have Garrett from this um, quest for Camelot. He's a knight that is blind, and of course uh, here is Quasimodo uh, from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. And we also have another heroes uh, that recently we have seen a little more of these kind of unusual heroes, like um, hiccup in how to train your dragon even even uh, toothless the dragon it's entering this classification and we also have uh, nemo and dory and of course we have like um very humorous villains like captain hook in peter pan so um i also would like to remark that lately a uh, storytelling is more open to show new points of view uh, from the perspective of other voices that, of course, need to be shown on the screen. And animation, I think that it has been like the perfect vessel to touch sensitive subjects with creativity, impact, and a profound respect. Uh, there are very nice animations, of course, that uh, sometimes go further, like um, the Grave of the Fireflies, where we can see the consequences of the Second War. Uh, we also have another perspectives like in Persepolis and the breadwinner about on, on other points of view of culture. But in this case, uh, I think that most of you know all these works. But I would like to know, uh, I would like to talk with you about the work of a uh, Mexican anim film animation studio that it's called Photosynthesis Media. And this studio is relatively new uh, before, of course, talking about it, about more of it. I would like to uh, show the perspective, no, like the, the motto of this company is we were to become, not to acquire. Uh, its main goal is to create animations that contain a social message, social message trying to reach a broad audience that could engage with social causes and pursuing to spread its films in commercial and art circles. Of course, um, they want um, to acquire a, a, a very good uh, box office, but also they have in mind that um, they want to spread their films in circle um, like arts, art films festival, because this way they can reach, of course, more people. But uh, before going to the, the work of this company, I would like to give you a very brief history of Mexican animation. It's very brief. It's important because you can see that um, right now, Mexican animation, it's, it's a, like a new industry. So here, uh, I would like to tell you that the first record of a, an animation in Mexico goes back to 1916. 1916 with the short film uh, titled The Dream, My Dream, uh, directed by Juan Aternac. But there are no, right now, there are no proofs of like a, an actual animation. There are only like pictures 
of course, there are some great things it says about this animation. And the first one that it, it, it's complete and you can watch it in YouTube, it's the one done in 1934, Mr. Catarino and his nice family by director Salvador Pruneda. And after this animation, um, the industry start to begin uh, because we are close to United States. Many, many people went to United across the border. They learn about this craft and they come back. And this way they try to put like any anim new animation studios. And one of them was uh, Producciones Saba, the one that you're seeing right now in, in on the screen. And uh, Producciones Ava began with the, the short film Paco Perico in Premier. It, it was done by Ava Producciones and it, it was founded by Alfonso Vergara. But uh, Alas, this studio was like uh, not going very well, like in, in, in a financial way. So they produced a, 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 a few short films. And after that, uh, they many, many animation studios start to came. So we can call like a golden age of Mexican animation from 40s to the 70s. No, there were like many studios like um, Idasa, sorry, Idasa, Balmar, that also later was, was known as Gamma. There was also Kinema Studios. And mostly these studios work like overseas animations, like mostly uh, some some work that work was done here in Mexico was for Hanna Barbera or also for the J World uh, cartoons, no, like Rocky and Bullwinkle. And of course, there was like um, a huge um, impact in, in publicity because publicity during during the seventies um, it was very popular to use animation because uh, of course there were no computer graphics at that moment. So at, the, at some point creating something with animation, it was very cheap. Like you can, you could create anything that you wanted in animation. So I can tell you that the golden age of animation was during this era. And it was until 1976 that the first feature film uh, came to Mexico. That it's the one that you're seeing right now, the Three Wise Man, in 1966. And from this moment, only, only um, five more films were done from 1976 to 1987. So it's there are a few. There are like not too many. And the problem was that. Once that 19, we, we of course in Mexico, there was a, a big earthquake in 1985. So that stopped like many productions, a few productions, because there was like a very, it was a very, it was a big earthquake that uh, changed, of course, many things. So after that, there was like, a, of course, a financial crisis. And because of this financial crisis, there was like no, no many budget, of course, for doing like new, new films, many animation studios that were working, of course, because of earthquake stopped working. And also I can say that the animation survived uh, really because of the commercials. But uh, during this, uh, um, by the end of the eighties, animation, Mexican animation really was surviving thanks to the short films that most of these short films were like sponsored by universities or school, private schools or government schools. So there was a very interesting short film done by Carlos Carrera that, that right now uh, he has done some films in Hollywood. And the short film, The Hero of 1994, uh, won the Pont de Haut in Cannes Festival. And, after, and 12 years later, René Castillo showed to us, um, well, create the short film, Down to the Bone, that it's uh, situated like in an underground world, like you can see like um, many schools, like in the festivity of Day of the Dead. And he put uh, like a lot of imaginary of the works, inspired by the works of Guadalupe Posada. So after that, like I'm telling you, there were only 
uh, six film features and during these years like almost 70 years there were like no really big animation so in 1995 when toy story came proved that animation in computer could be like very cheap uh, there was a like a new opportunity for studios to invest in computers and it was cheaper of course than than doing like animation cells that, that was popular at the moment so also flash animation was very popular and there was a studio called anime studios that started in 2002 with this movie magicians and giants and after that it, even when it has like a very modest uh, box office uh, this studio start to create more and more uh, films right now they have done like 15 or 16 uh, feature films also they have like a very uh, they have series they have short films but after that uh it was like a new beginning for mexican animation because uh we used to have like only six uh animated films and right now we are talking about like we have like 50 feature films during this uh these 15 these 17 years so anime animation production right now is more popular than ever uh, there are many films studios like anima huevo cartoon cinema fantasma cranio studio cassiopeia uh, among others and of course the one that we are interested about right now it's photosynthesis media that uh, they define themselves like a studio focus in producing animated films that generate social impact a solution for not profits around the world to help them communicate the Air Force and promote their goals through stories specifically designed to raise awareness and move to action. Uh, so this studio was created in 2013 by M Miguel Angel Luriegas. And the first job that they released was uh, the incredible story of Stone Boy on December 13. And uh, they released this film in 2015, sorry. And this film uh, have like a little heroes in production that of course help them to improve in futures in future film films. But the important thing that is that when they created the studio, they choose to of course uh, have the support of many of many organizations, not profit organizations, like like you can see here, Special Olympics, uh, of course organizations about. Uh, leukemia especially in children's so they choose to uh, right now they have uh, three films they are producing um, two more right, right now there are two in production so the first one that I want, I want to talk about it's this one that it's the angel in the clock that for the very first time in Mexican animation history we have a, um, a character that it's a little girl with leukemia uh, so it's very profound uh, it's very deep because uh, the story it's very well written in a sense that it's more like fantasy if you see it it's not uh, it's very far from mexican melodrama we have melodrama like in our veins because uh we have uh, soap operas that were very popular but this animated film separate from everything that it was done before because uh in this case it it treats the subject with a lot of respect. Uh, there is like no, of course, at some points we can see like very uh, delicate moments that the girl start to suffer because of, of her illness, but it's never, never dramatic. Uh, I want to show you like a very, very little um, video. So let me see if I can share with you uh, like how it was, uh, for instance, the drama, how, how, how is drama in our lives, like in soap operas? So let me show to you, let me share it very quickly. It's a little comic, this situation. Uh, it's a funny, of course. And you should see right now, this little scene of a Mexican soap opera, no. Of course, it's funny. Uh, 
and I wanted to share with you this little uh, video because um, most of the time, many, many films were like very dramatic. But with this film, like I'm telling you, it's it's very unique because it's more human. There is like, uh, of course, uh, like a viewers, we understand more about the situation. If you are an adult viewer, you can comprehend more. And of course, the main subject of this of this feature film is that this little girl want, wants to stop the time. So as you can think about it, there are many implications because she really wants to stop the time. And by wishing this, uh, she summons an angel that came and granted her wish and all the adventures start to unfold in this in this feature film so uh, the box office of course it wasn't too big but this studio what really likes about it is that they want to that that people have like awareness and compared to their first film this was of course if the animation is superior but of course, if you if you watch it, you can see that there are some flaws. There are some limited animation. It's of course it's not perfect. It was done very quickly in one year. Uh, however, it has one of the best scripts for Mexican for a Mexican animated film. And even when the what the box office was very low, the film was a success in many film festivals. Uh, it, it was of course a brave effort because it was the very first time that uh, an animation studio focused in a character that has like leukemia. Uh, I showed to you at the beginning of the presentation some characters that has disabilities. Some of them are like, uh, they, they don't have a limb or they don't have a hand. But in this case, they start to showcase characters like more humans with problems. Of course, we can see a little bit about the suffering of the parents. But like I'm telling you, this is very far from being dramatic or like in, at some point it can be like, uh, you want to cry like all the time. No, this is very human. And the next the next word that they have done, it's a costume for Nicholas. This was pretending to be released in 2020, but because of the pandemic, it couldn't be like um, in movie theaters. And this one in particular, uh, it talks about a, a little boy of 10 years, of 10 years uh, that has uh, Down syndrome. And even when you, when you are watching the film, you don't see like specifically that he has this, um, this disability, but what they do is that they hire a little kid, which name is Fran Fernandez, and I also want to show with you a little bit of his work. And they could reach this boy through um, an association uh, of Special Olympics, through the Association of Special Olympics. Uh, Lucia Sulea was the one that could recommend this little kid. And this little kid, of course, has uh, Down syndrome. And he is the one that made the dub for the main character. So I would like to share with you a little bit of the work of this little kid. And I'm sure I know the screen. And this is at the, and during, is, this is the movie, but at the end, during the credits, we can see like the sessions. Yo no tengo pesadillas. Yo no tengo pesadillas. Sí. Sí, pero el monstruo regresó. Es el reino del baúl. Es el reino del baúl, primo. Vamos a decir, también a él. También a él, por favor. So, at the beginning, of course, it was uh, very challenging. But the teacher that was like with him all the time could direct him very, very nice. And of course, they really achieve a very good result. The film, of course, feel more honest. And why are these uh, films so important? Uh, in, the, in the particular case of uh, Custom for Nicolas, it won uh, like the best film in, um, in the Quirinos Awards, these Quirinos Awards. Uh, it's a festival, a film fest, an animation film festival that awards um, 
any movie that is from Central America and Spain. And uh, of course, it, it, it couldn't have like a very box office because of the pandemic, but of but all the work was rewarded because it has been, of course, awarded in many, many film festivals. Uh, these two films that are right now uh, in production is Bestia and my my friend the Son or the Beast and my friend the Son. The first one, Beast, is going to talk about immigration and of refugees. So they're going to have like a special consultory with by United Nations. And in the case of my friend, the son is going to talk about a little, it's going to be the first animated film here in Mexico directed by a woman, which is very important. And it's more, it talks more about parenthood and Aztec art and Aztec culture. Uh, finally, for giving like a conclusion, and this, why are these two films very important? Because they open like a new way to talk about sensitive issues in, in, in animation. And they are shown like in a very nice way uh, in which the scripts uh, are very, very human. They are afar from uh, some Mexican films that mostly animation films in Mexico, they, they tend to be more comedy. The, the subjects are more comedy, but in the in this in the case of these two, the work is is well done because they have of course they consult people they have they have advice from many organizations, and the conclusion of all this is that we can see now that more more animation studios try to show to us another kind of stories. Uh, Pixar began this program Spark Shorts, uh, which two of these short films talk about autism. And also they talk about another subjects, but they're very interesting because um, they're trying to give a new voice to artists. They want that people could, could express what can affect their lives. And in the case of photosynthesis media, uh, you can wonder how is that this film studio, of course, we, we, we need to have like a profit. But in this case, the studio really, it's very brave because start to do these animations and even when the the box office is very low of course they can uh, support their the, the work of, of of these films by doing of course another services like working for for, um, for music videos for video games so that's the way that they can acquire money or they get money to continue producing these kind of uh, feature films so i want to thank you uh, if you have if you have more questions about these productions or if you would like to know more about it please don't hesitate in telling me and um, because animation i think is the with animation it is the best way sometimes to touch another kind of of subjects or themes so just to conclude um i think that this studio seek to give social value and by doing it they have created the best animated mexican films long live the creators the rebels that want to show a better world through the wonderful art of animation thank you so much here are a little about my bibliography thank you thank you very much for this inspiring presentation now i want to see all the films you were talked uh, talking about uh, yes, please meet uh, Ilian again, and uh, I guess we can also invite uh, Piotr, who is a director of uh, Rising of Lusitania, uh, Anima Dog Film Festival. Probably he would um, uh, say something as well. Uh, I have questions for you, but first of all, I would love to um, read a comment, a comment uh, under our... Um, <laughs> I need to find it, sorry for a while, uh, in our um, Facebook um, broadcast. Uh, I, I, have, I have one, one. I have to yeah, point out something Elsa. interesting. Elsa, yeah, Elsa is, is, is with us online in real time. So yeah, so the, the, um, she was a um, character of your uh, presentation and she uh, wrote 
very grateful for the interest in the philosophy with cinema projects for children and for the presentation. So thanks a lot uh, also um, from her. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, starting with you, I uh, would like to um, ask you because I am also interested in uh, education. I am a film educator as well. So uh, I have this question because usually when I work with film and with young viewers, um, I use introduction to the film uh, before it, before the screening, uh, because I think it's um, quite useful and also helping for children where they, they have uh, this um, uh, their attention is directed to some specific theme for example mm -hmm. but on the other hand um, when they um, have a contact with the film without uh, this introducing maybe their look is fresher maybe it's um, you know, not so limited, maybe it's more open. Uh, yeah. So I have this conflict um, sometimes, and I uh, wanted to ask you, what would you recommend in this uh, area? Uh, I think it depends. I think the, the, two, the two options are good. Uh, that depends the situation, the objective, what the work uh, is in process then, okay? So I think when you use animation to discuss a certain concept, I think it is interesting to you do a, a presentation before, and then you can guide a little the thinking and the view of this, this student. I think it's positive too. But when you want to know where the reaction of the children about one film that you think, oh, this film could be very interesting to show the, three, the children, to see the reaction of them. So I think you, you have to show the film without any comment. Mm -hmm. So I think the two, the two positions and, and actions from the, the teacher are good. Depends on the situation, the object of the work is that. Just for me, <laughs> I think so. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and I would like to uh, ask uh, also Anwar uh, if you are on this topic, because um, I uh, was wondering if uh, the films uh, you talked about, they need some kind of introduction or everything is uh, explained and um, readable in the film. Uh, well, in, this, in the case of the angel in the clock, it's very clear when the animation begins that there is something with the girl. Uh, and you can, of course, deduct that it's leukemia. I think that if, uh, of course, this is a film for all the family. So, like little kids, I think maybe they can understand what it's happening. But of course, like an, an adult viewer, you can understand. In the in the case of the last film, uh, Costume for Nicholas, when you see the animation, you can see that the, the even the animated character of Nicholas. If you see it, it's like there is a normal kid. There are not nothing. But when you start to listen to the voice, and if you watch, of course, the credits, you can understand that there was a kid uh, with Down syndrome that was doing the both. But this studio, when they were trying, like, like doing the press, uh, well, trying to communicate with the press what they were going to, to do, they of course put like a lot of emphasis that they were trying to do something different in Mexican animation by of course uh, trying to understand like another kind of subjects. So this was like uh, this rumor of course start to be very big of course in social social media in the press. So people could under when you went to watch these films, you already knew what was a little. Um, more about it. What it's very interesting is that the way that they uh, can lead uh, these individual films, they go in like in a magical way because, of course, they are like magical words. But I think that it's it's a very good effort to trying to do something that it has social impact. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, actually, I was wondering also about uh, the audience, if it's uh, a big audience of the films. I, I saw that you um, uh, left the, the information in some uh, parts of your presentation that it's on Disney+, Plus, but sometimes uh, it is happening to very smart, important films, uh, even awarded on the festivals, that they can't reach the audience. Uh, so I was um, about to ask about the audience of, of those films. Uh, are they popular, uh, the films, uh, and how do they uh, reach uh, young people? I think the, uh, the timing for the last one, it was very bad because it was going to be released in, in movie theaters, but the pandemic came. Uh, when the pandemic came in Mexico, there were like many ways to try to that people could go to the cinema. So uh, drive cinema started to be very popular because you could go with your family, with mm -hmm. your car, uh, and they uh, opened this movie in drive cinema. But of course, uh, during the pandemic, not many people wanted to go out. So it was it wasn't the best, like the best timing. And that's why they choose now, like to um, to show this movie in in the digital uh, digital platform, like a movie, like Disney Plus. And in the case of the first one, The Angel in the Clock, uh, it was released, of course, first in 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 art film festivals. But after that, they wanted to to show it in movie theaters. The problem sometimes that. Uh, people, of course, go to see here. The audiences in Mexico would see animation from US and, of course, from Disney. So sometimes uh, when they open a movie, people is like, oh, there is a Pixar or Disney movie, so we want to see that one. No, this one is for me. I think that in the case of The Angel in the Cloak, it started to be more popular after it was released mm -hmm. because of the subject and start to reach more and more people. And also now, because it's on Disney+, Plus, many people is watching these films, are watching these films. That, that's, that's good, and I'm glad because they seem uh, truly, um, yeah, making uh, or, or awaking awareness uh, among young uh, people. Uh, to Eliana, I have uh, one more question um, about where this kind of education can be um, realized or, or introduced, because um, in our Polish context, uh, it's not easy to uh, put film into our school programs, uh, because it's very stuffed with uh, all the topics uh, that teachers need to go through. Um, so is it possible in Portugal to have this kind of lessons uh, or classes or meetings because maybe uh, classes and and lessons seems too traditional uh, um, traditional name for that uh, but uh, um, is there a chance to put it into school program or it's rather a case of something additional uh, how can i how can I see? How can I see the situation here, uh, educational? Is that uh, each city has a kind of independence to choose some to choose and to to accept some project, some educational project. So in this case, Amarante, it's a city, uh, and Elsa is from Amarante, develop with the 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 main of CD, this kind of project to adapt to the, the schools of a marriage. Okay. And uh, so if the school and with a professor, of course, she works with a professor uh, into a, a contest of the class, the, the schedule of the class of the year, Okay, there is, uh, you know, you are a teacher, you know that you have all many details, bureaucratical details that you have to, to render to adapt to this. So, the beginning, the, the beginning, of course, she had some problems because uh, we always have problems when you have to begin with a project. But uh, 
uh, not just Elsa, but there is in Portugal, really, really, uh, how can I say, many, many people that work with animation for children in schools. So uh, the project of her is not uh, the first one. She, this project appeared uh, into a, a contest that already exists. Okay, uh, Abi Fejo, of course, work with these workshops in school uh, for ten years, I think, since the beginning of this this this, this century. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil we have, uh, and I talk this why, because the, this presentation is just a little, 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 little point uh, in the in the bigger project. Uh, because I'm working in the chapter to the Encyclopedia of Animation Studies, to the Society of Animation Studies, when I will write about the Elsa, Abifejoa, uh, and uh, uh, Wilson Lazaret works. Wilson Lazaret is from Brazil, and he worked too with animation for children and for older too. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Uh, come back to Portugal <laughs> in, Amarante, in your question. So I think uh, for Elsa, it's not so difficult to introduce this work, this, this project, because there was an uh, ambience to this. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, so I think when you have uh, the introduction of animation for children, even if we do not work with philosophy as Elsa, makes uh, in the case of Abifejo and Lúcio Nazareth and any others uh, 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 work makes here in Portugal that works with animation for children. Uh, I think animation is always one way to develop the children, the sensation of the children, the analysis, because you have to create a, a character, you have to create a narrative, you have to create a story, you have to create so many things that obligate the children thinking about all this new universe that you have to create. They have to create it. So I think this uh, helps the children and helps the development of this children to mm -hmm. think about themselves and about the ambience, the world, the, the, the family, the school, everything. And I think this is the principal point to make people better people. Because if you don't think, we can do better things. <laughs> you just repeat what was done before and you just will be copying, copying, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. <laughs> you don't create anything in any other wells and any other solution for our lives. So uh, uh, I think it's this, because in Portugal, I think there is ambience, uh, a good ambience to this. And when we don't have this, we we'll have to create this opportunity. You have to present this project. You have to show that, yeah, this is, this is possible. Brazil made, Portugal made, England made, it's so many. <laughs> places made yeah. we can do this too because we are human too we will develop and, and, and make a nation why we can do this okay so i think it can be a, a a good reference for you and even the, the work of elsa she was uh, awarded as a professor exactly because of this work so i think it's a good work for you yeah, Thanks. thank you. For, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, what is uh, really important in this uh, project is that it's also encouraging young pe people to um, to take the voice, right? Because they are exactly. sharing also, not only thinking, but also sharing uh, those ideas. Yeah. Uh, and and I think it's also uh, very important because sometimes the discussion in the internet they are far from. Uh, being developing and cultural, so it's uh, yes. also very important. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you a lot. And uh, to answer one more question uh, is about uh, are the films you were uh, talking about uh, uh, going also with some educational program or uh, some kind of uh, lesson scripts or 
I don't know, activities for children or um, not yet, not really? Uh, are you talking about my, my, myself or like uh, about... No, I mean, I mean the films because um, yeah. sometimes uh, uh, the, the studios also prepare some kind of, um, you know... Yes, that's or, right. Or, uh, they, they uh, in their web page, they inform to people. Uh, you can find the web page of this film studio, like Photosynthesis Media. Um, the, even the, the, the web page is in English, so they want to share that way. They can share with more people about what they are doing. Uh, I'm sure that they have show, uh, they have done like a special screenings, of course, in associations like uh there is a very important association of, of cancer here in Me of leukemia here in mexico so they do like a special screening sometimes when they want to show it, of course to also to the press uh and i think that right now that we're uh, there after the pandemic well we're still like in pandemics but life start to be a little more normal every day so i'm sure that uh with the with their next projects they are going to do like something like this. And I'm very sure that uh, they did a lot of like screenings when they were, uh, when the angel in the club was uh, on, on the screen, they were doing like a special screenings with many, many associations. Um, what I really like about it is that they get close. They have like, a, they have consultants, of course, uh this way they can be more clear or more honest the mess the message is more honest and i'm very sure that in the next projects we are going to hear more about it and they're going to they are already like doing like a, a special uh news about their future projects and on the web page is like all the information about like okay, what they're, they're doing uh, I think this is very important, this research part they are uh, doing, right? Because uh, uh, it seems like they really take care of being uh, realistic uh, and close to uh, the people uh, that um, live with uh, the the issue that this, the, the film... They're talking about, saying. yes. Yes. Thanks a lot, Piotr. Do you want to ask, do you have some questions or do you want to add something because you are... Yes, so yes, 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 yeah. yeah, and look like a dark night a little bit. Yeah. Maybe not now, but... <laughs> okay, yes, I have a question to Eliana uh, as well to Anwar. To Eliana first, uh, because uh, both of you present presentation are extremely great uh, so thank you for that thank you. um eliane uh, about your project uh did you invite people from other professions because you uh, talked about the uh, shoemaker right and uh, this this profession and this idea that young people can uh, meet the craft makers you know the the, the, the professionals from other um, areas and after the, the discussion after the conversation they start to be inspired inspired by 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 them and and create something uh, so did you uh, invited people from other professions yeah this project is from elsa so in this case, uh, because the, the, the short choose to, to work with this, the, the children are shoemaker, she take the children to a, a shoemaker in loco. Mm -hmm. Okay, but mm -hmm. sometimes she, she works with uh, uh, another kind of short that don't talk about one profession, but to one concept. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, I made a short, the, the, the title is Relationship, and she will use this short to work with children. In, mm -hmm. in this, in this uh, short, uh, the theme was relationship, relationship between all kinds of people, 
uh, mm -hmm. boss and employment, father and son, woman and women, woman and one woman, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we the working. professions in life. It, yeah, it's not a profession. <laughs> In this no, case, it's not it, it's a you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. The role, no? the role, yeah, the role, of the role yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it is this. So, I uh, really I don't know who, how she developed this part when you took the, the children and go to to know uh, a professional. I don't know how she did in this case. I don't know if she is in the in the in the shot and mm -hmm. is assistant is, is, is watching us to she can <laughs> answer you better than me <laughs> in mm -hmm. this case yeah. because uh how can i said i in a, in a working process to write and to in this case uh, uh, actually researching about all these little teams into the big team to mm -hmm. work this chapter so uh, i know something but there is something that i didn't know yet and mm -hmm. the work is, is going okay mm -hmm. but uh, i don't know if i could answer you in a better way but <laughs> it's, it's what I, I have now <laughs> thank you i mean that uh, i think it would be great idea to to you know to to give an opportunity to give a, an opportunity for the young people to meet uh, older people that represent some, yeah. uh, you know, some craft uh, things, right? Like yeah. shoemaker, you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah after I agree with you. Left, Start to create something uh, like the short animated movie inspired by this exactly man or woman from you know uh, the, the the woman that work in the uh, in the how to say the shop with flowers you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah you know you know uh yeah, yeah but it's not it's just my idea and the second question to 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 Ampar, uh because uh, you talked about the feature movies uh and about the technique the question is about the technique because all of them are digital right it's uh, yes two, mm -hmm. yes but did you or do you think about the other technique like uh, stop motion especially that in mexico you have a very strong stop motion yeah uh, that's artist. right yes well in the case of this studio um they were uh, almost all the work that i have done uh, they they start with 2d animation and of course now it's benefit with computers so it's like a kind of 2d digital animation mm -hmm. but in the particular case of the last one uh well both of them used like 3d animation at some point but in the last one of a custom for nicolas uh it has like a special character like it's a house that it reminds me to the house moving castle from Miyazaki. Mm -hmm. uh, that at some points uh, there you can uh, see clearly that it's 3D animation. And of course they use it because it's more easy to animate like a big, uh, something that it's very big. Uh, in the case of this studio, they use 2D animation. And like you said, now stop motion is very popular of course it was very popular by short films and right now there are like many studios uh one of them is cranio studio and the other one is cinema fantasma that they already done um a series for hbo max so mm -hmm. it's it's like a horror it's like horror and with music uh, it's it's very unique but in the, in the case of photosynthesis media they um, for now, they are only working like in 2D animation digital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks okay. a lot. Um, we need to end our discussion or uh, at least uh, switch to another um, place, maybe. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh, interesting, inspiring, developing presentations. Uh, and I hope I see you in uh, other occasions. Thanks a lot. Me either. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you thank so much. Thank you very much.
but the opportunity to know the work of Anwar is very good, so it takes high one. Thank you, it was an honor. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.